Hey, what's up guys? This is Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. Today we are talking about fixing a little problem inside of DaVinci Resolve, kind of covering our tail as it were. This might not be a specific problem that you have, but hopefully it will open your mind to fixing other little problems that might be similar. Here's what we got. We have this little action scene we shot the other day uh, with our friend Maggie, who's decided she's about ready to kill just about anybody who walks through that door. The only problem is we shot this with a fake gun, which was spray painted a long time ago, and there's little pieces of orange showing through because the person who shot this was super professional and had a lot of attention to detail, that person being me. <clears throat> but I thought, hey, this is a nice learning experience. So what we're gonna do is select these orange parts and we're going to desaturate them, make them blend into the gun a little bit better so people aren't like, oh, that's a spray painted gun then. What is all this then? And getting all upset because you don't want that. Right now, we just have a basic grade on this. This is shot on a Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K. We have a LUT on this from Vengeance 2 and some tweaks to correct the color balance. Pretty basic grade to start out with, but it will get the job done for this little lesson. So here's the idea. We need to select just these orange colors and desaturate them. The easiest way to do that is to pull a key. So I already have that done in this node, but I'm gonna start it from the beginning so that we can learn. I'm gonna call this orange. Makes sense, right? And I'm gonna go down to my qualifier tab. This is where you can select a color range to pull a key to adjust certain parts of your image. And I'm gonna zoom into this orange part here and just click around there for a while. Now, if I go up here to this little highlight tab, you can see that I have the orange selected on the parts of the gun, as well as a bunch of other crap in the scene. So what I need to do is play with my saturation a little bit because that's really where a lot of our problem is. And I can bring that low threshold up and it does a lot of good things. I can also clean my black a little bit, clean my white a little bit. And that's basically how you pull this key. And that's pretty much all we're gonna need to do to pull this key. Right now, it looks beautiful because I haven't actually done anything. Once I take the saturation down, it makes that gun look super sweet, super awesome looking gun. However, it also makes Maggie's skin look crazy, and it just makes the whole thing look like we're in some kind of weird acid trip, and we've been in Skate World for 30 hours just, just partying with our friends. So what we're gonna have to do is limit this node with a window. It's a good idea to put a window on it to make sure that it's not causing problems somewhere else in the shot. So I'm gonna go to my Windows tab and I'm gonna turn off my node here just to make sure I know where all the orange parts are. There's one here, there's some subtle stuff here which I'm not as worried about, and there's a couple little dots here. What I could do is draw a shape all around the gun and then keyframe this gun all the way back and forth in every shot, but that's kind of horrible. Here's a better way to do it. Make a little circle window and put it over the area that you want to be affected. Something like this. And notice I'm doing this in the middle of the shot. That's because at the beginning and the end of the shot, the gun is in a pretty different position. So I kind of want to start in the middle like a common place and then just track forward and track backward. I'm gonna hit Control T and see how it tracks to the end of the shot. Chances are it will track very well because, well, you know, the witches. I'm gonna come back to almost the middle of the shot and Alt T, that's gonna track backwards. And it's gonna stop tracking when it doesn't feel very confident. So I'm just gonna hit Alt T again and see if it keeps going. Usually it does a pretty good job. Hit Alt T again. All right, and now the gun is pretty much outside of the frame. So what I'm gonna do right here, I could probably just turn this off, but just for kicks, I'm gonna keyframe it. Let's go to the last frame where it had a good track, which is right here. And I'm gonna go in my keyframes panel here under corrector four, which is our orange. And I'm gonna click the auto key little diamond thing here. And I can just move this around. Maybe I'll just rotate it just a tiny bit. And that's gonna set a keyframe. If I twirl this down under circle window, it sets a keyframe. I can turn off my auto keyframe and just turn it on for my circle window so I don't wreck anything. And now I'll just move to the last part of the shot where this will actually matter, and I'll put that right there, and I'll put my window on top of it, and then I can go through and make sure that things look nice all the way through. Like I said, probably don't need to do it for this part, but that's how you would do it if you had something that you needed to follow all the way off screen. 
pretty simple. Now I'm gonna turn off my auto keyframe and look through it here. And I just wanna make sure that that circle is at the end of the gun the whole time. Looks good to me. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this dot up here, which is what I'm most concerned about. Switch over back to my windows and I'm gonna add a circle window. Same thing, I'm gonna add a teeny tiny window. Control T, zoom out so I can actually see things going. And pretty much just hit Control T over and over again until it's done. Sometimes it's just not, comp it doesn't have enough self-confidence, you know? Like, Resolve, you did a good job, buddy. Like, you do, you know, everything's okay. It has self-esteem issues. I mean, it's okay. Look, that's a good trick. I'm gonna hit Alt-T and go forward. It gets really blurry and loses the track there. So what I'm gonna do is take the last frame that was actually good. I'm gonna go down to my circle window one and set an auto keyframe. Just rotate this back and forth maybe. And that should set a keyframe. And I'm gonna move down towards where I can actually see this again. Set a keyframe there. Now I can go in between. There we go. And let's see if this will still track. I'm going to hit Alt T, track it. And I'm going to move back and forth to make sure it's following that track. This really doesn't have to be that amazing of a track, it just has to always cover this orange part, you know? because that, because we're already keying it, so we can kind of make things a little easy on ourselves. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here, just by moving this around, it'll automatically add a keyframe in my keyframes panel. And move this over, and then we'll just keep tracking Alt-T. And because this is so blurry and has so much motion, it's just having a really hard time tracking it. And so what I'm gonna do is just keyframe this, because it won't take very long. And although I wouldn't recommend normally just keyframing stuff, it might be a little easier in this situation just to keyframe it rather than try and track it. So that's following pretty well. And I'm just moving through the keyframes with my left and right arrow keys, setting this up where I can. A good thing to do is move a couple frames down, move it over and adjust it and then go back and see if it's on the right frames because it's generally less work that way. There we go. So there's keyframing, pink, pink. It's kind of one of those things where it's so blurry that people might not notice. Another thing I can do is just track one frame at a time with my tracker here. So I'm gonna click this back button and just go one frame at a time so I can kind of babysit it a little better. All right, and now we are off frame. So now we should have a perfect track on both of our big orange parts. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect because we're not doing like a global adjustment inside of the window. It's just keying these little parts of the gun. We could go crazy and do do this part and kind of desaturate that and maybe desaturate this little part, but you guys get the idea. So this goes from, this goes from, hey, that's a toy gun to, hey, that's actually a decently believable gun. So that's pretty much how you would do something like that. This is great for fixing any type of problem, like a little color that's popping a little bit too much. If you're trying to get rid of dust or maybe it's a paint splotch, whatever it is, it's a nice way to kind of touch things up digitally when you forgot to on set. And here's the difference. Here's the difference in this shot and this shot. And it's all the same technique, just tracking a little bit and keyframing. And it makes the shot a little bit more believable. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, hit like. And for more post-production tutorials, color grading tutorials, and all of those kinds of goodness, make sure to subscribe here to my channel on YouTube. My name is Casey Ferris. I'll catch you later.